I took the first trade pretty hard just because, you know, like, you know, coming in, being a naive rookie, it's just not something that, you know, you get you get used to people. You kind of get get really acclimated to the situation you're in. Um, and so it, it actually it's just crazy to say it's actually good that I got traded a second time because I, I was able to handle a lot better this time. Um, and so I'm really excited. And I just like the praises I've I've received from the coaches from you know teaspoon obviously we kind of we kind of go back um just from our being being together in new york um and having that connection but i just heard really really excited a lot of excitement from the gm um the coach and the owner as well and so that's just really really comforting to me because they know it's a hard time as an athlete um to get traded this many times that you know at such a short time in your career but they've just been so welcoming and so at first i was really surprised <laughs> I was like, at first I was like, for who? Like, who am I getting traded for? And I was even, even more shocked to hear it was for Kalia, obviously. Great player, all-star player. Um, but I'm really excited for what we're going to build in Chicago. Obviously, a lot of new pieces. Um, but I'm really excited to go with Breezy, somebody who I was with in Phoenix as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited. Um, Yeah, what's just your initial... I know you said you had a relationship with Teaspoon, but now that you're playing under her, you know, as her first head coach in the W, one, what does that mean to you? And two, what is that relationship like uh, between you and Teaspoon? Yeah, so our relationship started when I was a rookie. We actually had a, uh, I don't want to get this wrong, but we had like a Legends dinner um, that the that the New York Liberty had facilitated. And so the entire current roster, we had went to a dinner and there was a few speeches and there the Legends came back. And so that included, um, I believe, Swin Cash, Teaspoon, um, and I'm blanking other people's names right now, but a bunch of legends who had played for the Liberty. And she just, this is the first time I've really been introduced to her. And she just, you guys know, she has just a fire and a passion about her that I was like, oh, hello, nice to meet you. And she just kind of spoke so much life into me and was um, just really encouraging about what I could be as a player. And this was as a rookie. And so, you know, it's really kind of full circle again in my, my, my fourth year be, be, have the opportunity to be coached by her. And so I'm really excited. Um, and she, like I said, she's, she's passionate, she's fiery, she's hard hard um she's kind of something you want in a coach to really really push you especially for the people we have and the the team and the the personnel that we have as well as this year and so I'm really excited I'm excited for her as well when she was able to get her first head coaching job here I was elated for her just because I know how hard she's worked I know how she worked it with the New York Pelicans I'm sorry New York Pelicans the New Orleans Pelicans and her role there um and so she deserves this more than anybody I'm really excited to play under her yeah, let's take a look at that roster. You know, now that it's it's not fully come together, but it's starting to, and especially if we wanted to really focus more on your position in the post, there's still, there's probably going to be another addition or so coming because three posts is not enough. So when you look at who you have, you know, with Isabel, you have Brianna and you also have E, what do you see out of the post group that you guys can bring this year? Yeah, and for me, I do, I feel like a lot of the conversations that we've I've had with well not a lot I've said because then the first initial conversation I had with Teaspoon was about my versatility and so that could be in the post but that also could be on the perimeter as well maybe a little bit more than it has been my career in the past which I'm really excited about just because I feel you know every single year you want to grow you want to expand your game and I feel like that's next level for me so it won't just be in the post for me this year um, but as you said to answer your question I mean from Elizabeth with her blocking abilities her defensive abilities and obviously I'm playing I play against her out here in Turkey as well and so I'm able to kind of see how she's gotten better how she's able to affect her team and I think she's just been like a solid pro since she's since she's gotten to the, to the league and I think she'll continue to do that for us as well as we continue into the season Izzy I'm really excited to see her come back obviously we missed her last year with with an injury um but even before that she was just a kind of a a very athletic you know for for a player who can kind of shoot it who can pick and pop who can um you know get to the rim I remember when we were in New York um I think uh, that she had a crazy game against us when she was with Dallas and so just that potential you can see in her and so I'm really excited to see how she's come back and recovered and I'm excited to play with her and then obviously Breezy uh, we played with each other last year and she brings um, similar to Elizabeth in the same way that her defensive abilities is, is you know, second to none. Um, she's able to really put be put in places where she may not need to score, but she can do the right things at all times. And there was times where last year, you know, she was she was guarding the best player. Um, and that might have been even been guards. Maybe that was, you know, a, a bit of a challenge for her. But just to see that the coach had confidence in her from last year, like that shows that she can do it. And that brings so much to us. Um, as far as, you know, defensive abilities, like I said, as well as Elizabeth. So I'm really excited for not only obviously those three, but also us as a whole as well. Then my last question, I'll let Steven jump in. Sorry, Steven, I've been hogging it all the entire time. Uh, <laughs> uh, when you look at this team, you know, everyone's saying rebuild. 
It's not really a rebuild. It's more of like a retool. So what are things that you, what are tools that you have that you can bring to this team? And what is a tool that you've worked on, you know, overseas in Turkey or just this off season that you really wanted to bring to another level and elevate? Yeah, I feel like one tool that I can definitely bring is my versatility. Um, and that's something that, again, kind of one of the same answer that I've worked on over here as well is uh, I've been able to be with a coach and with a team that really believes in my versatility. And so, yeah, one possession, I might be coming off a ball screen and might even be making those reads, which I've gotten better at as well. But then also the next possession, I might be setting a screen. But then the next person, I might I might be uh, posting up on a mismatch. And so there's just a I feel like for me, there's just a bunch to my game that is, excites me because it's like I feel like I have the ability to um, to help our team so much. And so those are things that I've really, really, really been able to kind of see over here. It's just my versatility has been used in so many different ways. And that's definitely something I can bring to Chicago. Thank you so much. Um, Steven, go ahead. Hey, Michaela, how you doing? It's Steven from CHGO Sports. Hi, Steven. I'm good. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Welcome to Chicago. Uh, Thank you. My first question uh, kind of stems from a little bit of what you spoke on with uh, with Carly, but it looks looking at it more from a defensive lens. Uh, I think the versatility you bring on that end gives as much value as anything else from being able to go from guard and guards to wings or even post in the post or the traditional or non-traditional floor spacers. I was wondering, have you had conversations with Teaspoon about what role um, and role is in not putting you in the box you might be able to play for this team um, heading into this season? Yeah, our first and I've only really had a one or two conversations with her, you know, um, and that first conversation was surrounded about my role and what that meant. And one of those things that she did bring up was my defensive abilities. And she was very she was very confident because she was like, you could guard one through five. And I was like, five. I don't know. You know, there's some big girls in the league. But just to have her to have that confidence in me. And um, even as I said before, I've not just on the offensive side, I've also seen myself be in a position where I had to guard like point guards out here in Turkey. And that has just completely, you know, boosted my confidence in my defensive abilities. And sometimes you just don't know, you know, if you've never done it, you really don't know. Um, and so, yeah, that's something that we definitely talked about with, with just teaspoon and, you know, getting over ball screens, get, getting through off screen guarding some of the best players on the team um you know staying in front of people being a kind of a defensive matchup that you know I'm going to be looking for those matchups where I'm guarding you know a lot of the 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 players that are going to score and so that's you know obviously there's there's a lot of confidence in that but I'm ready to step into that for sure and I think uh just kind of looking at the evolution of basketball in general but even on the W side um in 2024 things are shifting to being a little bit more positionless. You're starting to see more yes. centers bringing the ball to the floor and also players like you guarding guards and guarding fours on the other side. Do you feel like that's an advantage for you in this climate of the W in terms of being a piece that can do so many, do so many things and you really, where you can't be put in a box? Absolutely. I feel like, you know, this is like so stupid, but I feel like when I first came in the league, you know, part of the, I want to say the criticism that I got was that I was kind of this tweener. I was kind of like this positionless kind of player. And so it was kind of seen as a negative, you know, which is whatever, you know, people can say whatever and that's okay. But just for it to kind of have evolved into now we are going into a league where, you know, like you said, people can bring up the ball who are six, four, six, five or whatever, like people like players like me as well. And so I think that's such an advantage for the league. And as you see the younger girls coming in, you see that more and more and more. And as the game continues to evolve, that'll kind of be what it is. Like it's, it's really not about, can you play the one, two, three, four, five? It's can you hoop, can you defend? And that will bring value to whatever team you're on. And so that's exciting, obviously for me, but it's exciting for just the, the where women's basketball is right now as well. And where it's heading. And I'm curious with your time spent with Brittany Griner and also with Diana Tarazi, what were you able to pick from their brand, whether it be on the court or off the court, that's helped you evolve as a as a basketball player heading into your next situation? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, having that experience, you know, with two Hall of Fame or two future Hall of Famers, um, it's just second to none, obviously. And um, it was short spent, but just I've learned so much from DT just about reads. And that's as somebody who's transitioning to 
try to be better at playing at the, on the perimeter, you know, that's somebody that you'd want to learn from every single day. And so just making those reads, making quicker decisions, um, kind of seeing, seeing like this type of pass versus this type of pass is what I really learned from DT. And she's just so smart and just so IQ driven. And so being around her, I was like a sponge every single day. And then also like, um, as we kind of already mentioned, I also was with the post group as well, sometimes in Phoenix as well. And so I was with BG too. And um, she would just kind of, kind of do the same things um, about how people are guarding you, um, you know, went to flash with a double and just like logistical basketball things as well like that. But yeah, I'm just really grateful for what I learned from both of them. And that's just something that, you know, you, you dream of with players like that. So I'm really grateful I had that experience. And then my last question, at least initially for you, is looking at the offensive side, just kind of assessing where the sky roster is at the moment. I think spacing is something that's going to be a kind of a work in progress for you all. I was wondering how you feel you can help aid that specific uh, part of the offensive process and just generally what you feel you bring that would be most uh, valuable to the offensive side. Yeah, I know. I I know that obviously Dana um, will, you know, she's a great player. Obviously, I've known her for so long and I also get to play against her um, here in Turkey as well. And she definitely is a somebody who has spaces the floor just because, you know, she can shoot the hell out the ball. Um, and obviously, we don't know. Diamond, you know, she's a great player. We've seen what she's done in the past. She can also shoot it, do a little bit of everything as well. And so I think specifically those two are really, really great spacers. But I also for me, when they have the, the ball, they're going isos or whatever it may be, like I can cut, you know, and I've been working on my three-point shot as well since, you know, it's not, it's never a stop in progress. It's always a work in progress, but also I feel like I can help in that aspect as well, but, you know, letting them kind of do their thing and then finding ways to kind of cut off the ball, um, use off screens as well, uh, make the right decisions, make right reads. I think that's how I can kind of contribute in that way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michaela. Go ahead and catch that flight. Thank you again. Okay. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank nice you. meeting you. Bye-bye. All right, I'll go ahead and admit Lindsay in. One second. Hey, Lindsay, are you able to hear us by chance? Hi. How's it going? Hey, hello. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Small group here, so make sure to get everyone. Um, we'll go ahead and start with Carly Bell. Hi, Lindsay. Carly Bell with Marquee Sports Network. Nice to meet you virtually. Um, <laughs> sure. First first question for you is just, you know, you came over here uh, in a free agency deal. What were those conversations like, uh, and what was it about Chicago? Um, and maybe even if you wanted to get into, was it Teaspoon? Like, what was the selling point for you to come um, to the sky? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I first spoke to Jeff, who I hadn't met before, um, but I kind of knew of him just um, and what he used to do in player development and all that kind of stuff. And then what I mean, his specific role with Chicago in the past as well. Um, and obviously, I knew Teaspoon from um, our time in New York together briefly for like a season and some change. Um, but yeah, those conversations went really well. And I felt comfortable with Teaspoon. And I felt comfortable with her as a coach. Um, just from, you know, our past stuff. Um, so I think just their kind of shared vision and where they want to take Chicago and how they just want to be as a team, as an organization, um, kind of drew me in. And also just obviously when you speak to Teaspoon and you get to know her a little bit, I mean, you kind of just run a, want to run through a brick wall for her in a way. Um, she always <laughs> makes you feel that way whenever you talk to her. So, I mean, just her as a person, her uh, as a coach, um, her past as a women's basketball player in the WNBA, especially, um, and just being able to have the opportunity to learn more from her um, and learn from Jeff as well. Is there also kind of an appeal, you know, you went to Notre Dame and kind of being back in something that's familiar, was that something that was appealing to you as well? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm very comfortable in the Midwest now, obviously going to Notre Dame, playing for Mini last year, um, have explored Chicago a bunch, just in college and all that stuff too. And so just, yeah, it's being able to go back to that area, um, being close to Notre Dame, being able to go back to campus and, you know, see Coach McGraw, see uh, Neo, and just being able to kind of immerse myself again um, with that program. Um, and then kind of another question for you. Uh, when you look at the guards, you know, and where you um, can fit in with who was here, you know, with Dana and Marina, what is it about the guard group that is appealing to you? And what is it that you can bring to this set of guards that, um, either something that you worked on or something in your game that wasn't utilized as much until maybe being in this guard group? 
Yeah, for sure. That's a good question. I think um, with the guard group that we have, you know, myself, uh, Dana and Marina, I think we're just very dynamic. And I think we all complement each other very well and can provide different um, skills out there on the court. Um, and I'm definitely very glad to be on the same team as them now and not, you know, playing against them. But, um, you know, with Marina and with Dana, they're more like scoring guards in a way. Um, you know, Marina is more like a three-pointer, uh, three-point shooter in that way. And Dana just kind of does everything out there. She's able to slash and get to the basket. She's able to get to her floater and get to her mid-range and also really shoot the three incredibly well. Um, and so I think for me, I do a good job of kind of making everyone's lives easier out there on the court. And so I'm hoping to provide that for the team, but also for the guard group and just being able to be that kind of more traditional point guard and setting things up and getting into the paint and playmaking in that way um, and setting them up as well whenever we're out there on the court together. So kind of more wanting, like, I hate, like, assists sometimes don't always get the love, but like being kind of more of a sister than, than in a score type. Okay, gotcha. And then kind of my final question, uh, for you is what's one thing that you've worked on this off season that you wanted to add to your game that you want to bring this year? Yeah, I think for me, it's always just about um, having more confidence and being more comfortable and shooting the ball, whether that's my three pointer, whether that's the mid range and just kind of watching film and going back and watching tape and seeing where, you know, okay, maybe I could have taken this shot there or maybe I could have, you know, done a different move to kind of set up a different kind of shot there. Um, and just kind of having a more aggressive mindset um, on offense. And, you know, I always want to set up my teammates and get them more comfortable. But at the same time, I kind of I always have to look for myself. And that always opens up other things uh, for my teammates as well. So just keeping that aggressive mindset um, at all times on the court was really important to me this offseason. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Steven, all you. Oh, wait, we can't hear you if you're if you're talking. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hey, Lindsay, Steven Gardner from CSGO Sports. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Uh, one of the things that really stands out to me, uh, having watched you through college and also in the W uh, over your career, is your play and pick and roll and how you make reads. I was wondering, how have you gone to as far as like, um, how, how can I word it? Uh, let's say just garner a feel for your pace of play in that context. How has that evolved over time? And is that just more of a field thing or is it just you intentionally playing at different speeds to dictate to the defense in a different way? Uh, yeah, I think it's both. I think as I've gotten older, it's been more so like doing that on purpose to kind of dictate things and manipulate things in that way. Um, and I think just as I play more basketball, just be, being able to know what to do in each sort of pick and roll defense that we get and that we might encounter um, in basketball, you know, the drops, the ices, the traps, the hard hedges, things like that. Just knowing, you know, where I'm looking potentially, where it might be open, where do I see the help coming from? And I don't have to look to see, you know, who's open. I just know where the help came from and I know who's going to be open from there. Um, in that side of things. So yeah, just really being able to kind of like see how the defense is playing us and being able to drive this way or drive that way or kind of just like pause and hezzy a little bit to see how the defense reacts and um, ball fakes, everything. I kind of used to my arsenal there. And then kind of assessing who your pick and roll partners might be with this guy. I think there's a diverse group of uh, screeners that give you a little bit of everything. Uh, can you just kind of speak to what you've seen in terms of uh, projecting forward with uh, what your partnerships with each screener might be? Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. Okay, I'll start with Bree because obviously I'm most comfortable with her playing in Notre Dame. Um, you know, I think Bree does a great job of putting pressure on the rim. Um, you know, she's kind of that in the air threat um, in this league and especially for the sky for the summer. Um, so I'm really comfortable with her just kind of not even in pick and roll, just kind of driving into the gaps of the defense and driving into the teeth of it and just throwing it up to her and she can go up and get it. Um, she's really good at reading, you know, when to tap it in, when to come down with it, you know, how to grab it and things like that. So I'm excited to get back to that with her. Uh, with Izzy, I see her kind of just from what I remember more of being like a pick and pop player. I think she's really good at reading, um, you know, where the gaps are in sort of the uh, pick and roll defense and being able to read just like how to play in the pocket. I think she's really good at that and being aggressive in that. Um, e. Will is kind of the same, Elizabeth Williams, 
you know, she's really good at finishing over the top. She's really good at uh, reading the defense and reading her players and just kind of filling gaps. And uh, I remember watching them that summer with Courtney Williams being in that pick and roll uh, offense and how they kind of read each other and kind of played off each other in that way. And that was really hard to guard. So looking forward to getting back to that. Um, Sika, I kind of, I've watched her a bunch, but obviously haven't played with her. But she's another good slasher, another good diver, um, super active. I'm looking forward to playing with her and just kind of playing off of her energy and getting her into screen and roll stuff. She can pick and pop and then drive or pick and pop and shoot or pick and, and just really dive hard into the paint um, with her activity. So looking forward to that. Uh, anybody else missing? I think that checked them all off for me as far as the pick and roll partners goes. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah. I was also curious. Um, so you have obviously a long lasting relationship with Marina. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, have you two had any conversations about uh, what type of synergy you could have with the sky context and uh, just kind of what those conversations have been? No, we haven't had any yet, um, but I'm sure we'll get to it as the season gets closer. I'm really looking forward to just playing with Marina again. I mean, obviously her gravity as a shooter is important and I think we can do a lot of good stuff um, on offense and playing off of each other and reading each other really well. So I'm looking forward to whatever, you know, Teaspoon draws up for us and whatever system they have us playing in. Um, but yeah. And then my last question for you, just kind of looking at obviously playing against this guy team multiple times last season and then now being a part of this team. How do you feel you can most impact uh, this new rendition, whether that be uh, in the pick and roll, whether that be pace, leadership, uh, just kind of let you take the wheel on that? Yeah, I think you hit all of them, actually. Uh, you know, with pick and roll stuff, I'm really good at reading that. And I think um, that'll be good for us, but also just with pace. And I like to kick the ball up the floor. I like to play fast, but I also like to play under control as well. But I think, you know, playing with like some flow, some freedom will be good for us and just being able to make reads um, out of transition will be good. And I, I like playing that way. And I'm really good at doing that. Um, I think leadership wise, you know, we have a lot of um, players on this team who have played a lot of years in this league. And so everyone can provide their own sort of leadership style. And I'm looking forward to how we can all mesh that together um, and, and try to come together as a team um, in that way. But yeah, just looking forward to you know, being able to provide and play my style of basketball um, and how that can help this guy this summer and, and the players they have returning, but also the new players they have coming in. All right, I'm sorry, I had one more quick follow-up for you. Okay. <laughs> Just kind of looking at the, the general uh, evolution of WNBA basketball, how have you seen the roles in terms of responsibilities and really even demands for a point guard transition from how they were when you first came into the league and what you were preparing for draft-wise to where they are now and kind of where they're headed even past this upcoming season? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think when I was first coming into this league, you know, you had the Sue Birds, you had the Lindsey Whalens, Sloots, all those kind of players, and really that more so traditional but still could score, I think. And, you know, those point, those point guards who are putting up a lot of assists and also scoring a lot and – controlling the pace and controlling the tempo, controlling the team out there on the court. Um, and I think you still have that today, but I think it's definitely just throughout, through the college game as well. I think it's trending more towards like scoring point guards, which is also a good thing. I think it's good for the game. Um, it makes the game more exciting. More offense is always a good thing. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely trending in that way. Um, but I think you still have those point guards who are tallying up the uh, assists who you have in the house cloud you still have Sloot out there doing it um Jordan Canada had a pretty good year assist wise last year I'm trying to think of anyone else um obviously Courtney Williams in the sky offense did really really well um but yeah so I think um you still have like a lot of different styles in terms of point guards um and I don't think there ever be a time where one sort of more so takes over the other. I think everything, not really cyclical in a way, but I think it kind of is. And I think you'll still have, you know, the scoring point guards and things like that. I think you still have the more so traditional point guards, but obviously they still have to score as well in this league. You can't just be a point guard who can't score anymore or can't shoot anymore. I think we're more so training away from that, actually. But yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much.